Why is it the minute we get a club in hand that looks a little bit different from the norm, maybe it helps us a great deal more than what our current club does, but doesn't fit that normal criteria, it becomes a cheat stick. bad start it's right at the flag and it's actually gripped a little bit in fact it's actually spun a little bit right so today we're going to have another a look at another another one of these clubs that's a bit odd a bit off the beaten track not your norm like i just said but what i want to really ask the question is i've got another wedge in my bag which is exactly the same but in a traditional style and the question is how much better is this odd looking thing than what we associate with being the norm in this game. Well, that one's nearly gone in. That's a great start. First question is, before I start hitting too many balls, is how many of you play what we'd describe as a traditional type of wedge? How many of your people struggle with that wedge? And um, I just wonder if a change to a club like this might be of a help to a lot of people. And more importantly, have you ever considered these type of wedges? Like I said, there's a certain category that you put them into, they're slightly gimmicky. But the issue is, they could be a major help. But I wonder how many of you just put off by purely how they look, and perhaps what your mates might say. Right, so what's the product in question? Well, it's another product from Maisel, and uh, in recent weeks or months maybe, I've looked at a couple of different products that perhaps are aimed at average golfers who are struggling with their short game. We looked at a traditional style chipper, we looked at uh, another club from Maisel, which was that odd wedge with no grooves in. That one proved to be an illegal club, so there's no use in uh, that one was no too good. But each of them had problems as well in terms of their versatility. And what I've got here is another product from Maisel, it's what you'd class as a straightforward chipper. It's everything you would expect it to be. It's very much like a putter in its design. Even the way it sits at a dress, it's very much an upright position that you see at a dress. It's available in a number of colors. And I think you'll probably see a more common product. I think it's called the Square Strike Wedge. It's got a green insert. This is available in green, but I asked them to send it me in a more subdued color. This has got a black insert and a little more pleasing on the eye for me. Essentially, it's a decent enough made product. CNC milled face from shots of it already. It's getting a little bit of grip on there. That seems to be working, but it's this width of sole that's the real interesting part for me. Again, for the wedges that I've tried in recent weeks, and I even using the Cleveland CBX wedge, one of the things that are really appeals to me in particular for average golfers in making life easy is the width of that sole. And I think it plays a major part in helping us, stopping us digging, stopping us duff them chips. And that's a big thing and a big part that a lot of us suffer with. So what I'm gonna do, put this to the test, we'll do a number of different situations. We'll play from sort of maybe 80, 90 yards out, and then we'll start to get into the short game in and around the greens and perhaps even give this one a go out of the bunker. That was a little bit of ground first and arguably, like I said, that's the type of shot that you might have just dug in with. This thing sort of bounces, use the bounce, slides along the ground a bit and make something good out of uh, what was essentially a poor strike. That's a more cleaner strike, perhaps even. One thing I'm noticing, it's actually gripping quite well, which has surprised me as definitely and um, don't forget middle of winter here at Conway um, the greens are never the most uh, receptive but uh, on a couple of shots in it's uh, that's a better shot much more control and again decent feel at the club quite surprisingly so but like I said the big surprise at this point is that little bit of grip that it's also got on the club uh, once you've got it nice and, uh, and nice and neat the thing you've got to ask yourself when you're watching this video is kind of like, and it's maybe just going to be a repeated message throughout. No club is a magic wand, as I always like to say, but you've got to look at if you're struggling with chipping, are these type of clubs a help? And I think even at this early stage, I would say without doubt, it's a resounding yes. If you're struggling with chipping, 
yet technique is always going to play a part a major part don't get me wrong no one's ever dismissing that message but what i am saying is things like this this wide sole the sort of stand-up position very much almost restricts the type of swing you can put on in some ways trains you into a way of playing a shot in a certain way and i think it could help golfers get that ball nearer to the hole more often and at the end of the day i think that's what it's all about isn't it irrelevant of how it looks i chuck a few balls down in this kind of uh, very much a sort of hollow at the side of the green it's something that where uh, what interests me this club is available in a few different lofts and for me i think it's got more versatility in playing what this is which is a 55 degree because it sits very much in, like I said, an upright style, almost like a putting style. I think to it, chip and runs, it certainly doesn't affect it too much in terms of having the loft that it's got on. But it also gives you the ability to just leave that club face nice and open and try and just pop this one up a little bit. And that's what I think some of the standard chippers are lacking, is uh, they haven't got enough loft and therefore... Look at that, that's a superb pickup. Really pleased with that. Really pleased with the results as well. But what the other chippers don't have, I think they're generally lofted about 45 degrees, is that they're sort of, they're one dimensional. So yeah, they're good at what they do and essentially on a, on a Lynx course, good at a chip and run thing. But have they got the ability to sort of do what we've just done there? That was a bit lower. Not quite as nice a contact, but still produced the results and high enough loft. I just got a little bit of ground first. But this, this, is, this is the key for me with this type of club. You've got to have the versatility. First shot was by far the best. None of them I'd be too displeased with either way. Got the ball popped up, and that's a big tick in the box for me. It's a bit of versatility to allow you to make the decision to perhaps leave one of your regular clubs out and stick this in. Right, let's double check this. 79 yards in. And for me, the first thing this club has got to do it's got to replace what my 55 degree wedge, I carry a 54 actually, but it's got to replace what it does in the bag. So 80 yards in, anything around that, I have a nice soft wedge, 55, 54, that's what I'd go for. So it's got to be able to do that, it's got to be able to take its place if I'm going to put it in the bag. This is where naturally it seems a little bit upright. It sort of sits the hands in one position, which I'm not overly comfortable with. That's a good strike. That could be more than 80. We've got the camera on the green. Yeah, that's just a little bit long, actually. Can we hit something just a little bit softer? And get something at that flag and see how it reacts. That should be good. It's right at it, maybe a little bit short, that. Sit. Sit. We've got a camera near the green, or uh, certainly on the flag. I Hopefully that picked that up. Every shot that I've hit, when I've got a nice pure strike on it, it's got a bit of grip. So in terms of the groove pattern, in terms of the spin it generates, in terms of the control, massive tick in the box, it does it. It's got great control. I, the, the, the reservation I have on the full shot is slightly uncomfortable in terms of, like I said, the position it sets me up in. It's a little bit upright. And I did drop the hands then, it didn't affect it too much, but I just wonder if that would have too much of an effect uh, it would continue to play that way I just think for getting the ball on a target line. Nice confident bash down on the back of it. Another three balls. Are, uh, like I said, the big thing for me about wedges, it's all right being fancy, flicking them up in the air and doing all them kind of nice things that sometimes you have to if you're faced with a bunker or whatever kind of obstacle in the way. But when you've got a lot of green to work with, that easy style of just backing through getting the ball, chasing at the hole. Surely he's got the biggest percentage of helping us score. And this kind of club helps you do it, I reckon. Who's buying a uh, nasal chipper? It begs a lot of questions.
Right, do you know what? I'm going to end this review here. It's uh, quite simple because I think this review, in some ways, it's almost about a golfer's mentality rather than about a review of the club because I think it highlights once again that uh, there's plenty of stuff out there that can help us make the game perhaps a little bit more easier. Uh, but we perhaps choose to ignore it and for all the wrong reasons. And I think, like I said, I'll do no more than that in terms of the, uh, the way I end this video. I think this can help. I don't think it's the answer to all your questions. I think for me personally, like I said, that one upright position that it presents itself at address is, is a negative. But I think there's plenty of positives in there as well. And I think it's just an idea that I never recommend anybody buys any club. That's not my game. But what I will say is if you're struggling with the chipping, if you're struggling, then obviously look to address the technique issues. But it's a club that, like I said, could solve you a few problems and give you a little bit of help. And at the end of the day, all we want to do is get on this course uh, with a bit of a smile on our face. So check it out. I'll put a link down below. It's available from Amazon. The, the um, two things are, I think it's £59 from uh, UK Amazon. And it was $81, I think, uh, in terms of the American price. So uh, there you go. It's all yours. I'll leave you to it. I just can't believe what a fantastic day to be down here at Conway Golf Club. And uh, I'm going to finish off and play a few more golf holes. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Have a good time. Thanks for watching. See you soon.